there's none that can be compared to him. This God is a good God. He's a great God. He's a wonderful God. I appreciate him. Wave those hands and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I give you all the praises. Hallelujah. For you are good and your mercies endure forever. For you are kind, Lord, and your mercies endure forever. For you are gracious, Lord, and your mercies endure forever. For there is none like you, none like you, none like you, none like you. You are good, Lord. You are good, Lord. You are good, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Be thou exalted, Father. Be thou exalted, King of kings. Be thou exalted, Lord of lords. We appreciate you. We give you the praises, Lord. We give you all the honor. Be thou exalted, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We join the host of heavens, O Lord, and we declare that you are good. We join the host of heavens, O Lord, we declare that you are wonderful. We join the host of heavens, O Lord, and we declare that you are gracious, Father. You've been faithful from the beginning to now, O Lord. Your name has been the strong tower upon which your children run into father we are grateful unto you we are grateful unto you we are grateful unto you receive all the praises receive all the honor receive all the adoration for in jesus mighty name we have prayed i want you to open your mouth and thank the lord for the gift of life hallelujah thank him thank him for the gift of life hallelujah today is the last wednesday in the month of january hallelujah and today is the last day in the month of january hallelujah He's been God all the way. He's been God all the way. He's been God all the way. Hallelujah. He's been God all the way. It's been His mercy. It's been His grace. Hallelujah. It's been His faithfulness that has been keeping us. Hallelujah. It's been Him. It's been Him. It's been Him. It's been Him. If we start to count the goodness of the Lord upon our lives, time will fail us to do that. In the name of Jesus, Father, we appreciate you, O Lord. And we acknowledge that it's not because of our righteousness. It's not because of our money, O Lord. It's not because of anything of us, O Lord. It's not by our power, O King of glory. But, Father, it is by your mercy. It's been your grace, O King of glory. That is why we are experiencing today, O Lord. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, O Lord. Be thou glorified, King of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, your mighty hand has been holding us, O oh Lord. You've been holding us in your grip, O oh Lord. You've been holding us tight in your grip, O oh King of glory. You have not allowed the wishes of the enemy to be upon us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, you have not allowed the wishes of the enemy to take effect in our lives, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you have always been there. We thank you, O oh King of glory for your protection upon our lives for your guidance upon our lives for your provision upon our lives father we say thank you in the name of jesus christ we thank you for the body of christ in all over the places we thank you for the church universal O king of glory we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you oh lord father if we continue to number it oh lord time will fail us O king of glory but father king of glory from the body of our heart, O oh Lord, and all that is within us, O oh King of glory, we are saying thank you. Accept our thanks, O oh Lord. Accept our praises, O oh King of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you for you being our maker, you being our friend, you being our shield, you being our buckler, hallelujah. You being all in all for us, O oh King of glory. We are so, so grateful accept our thanks O king of glory in jesus mighty name we have prayed i want you to open your mouth and tell the lord father i thank you even as the month has ended i know lord you are crossing us over into a beautiful new month that is full of expectations oh lord in the name of jesus christ lord we have escaped january oh lord we will escape february oh king of glory in the name of jesus christ your faithfulness oh lord 
will never cease in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, your mercy, your loving kindness, O King of glory, it will never cease in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you that has kept us, O Lord, you will continue. You will continue. As, O Lord, is only to give you thanks at all times, O Lord, for the beautiful things that you are doing in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, King of kings. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Be thou glorified, O Lord. Be thou exalted, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' glorious name we have prayed. Hallelujah. You know, when we say let's thank the Lord, many of us, we take it for granted. Hallelujah. We should not take it for granted what the Lord is doing in our lives. Hallelujah. We cannot count the number of people that have lost their life in this January. Even from yesterday, day before yesterday, even today. Hallelujah. But the mercy of the Lord has been keeping us. His grace has been covering us. Hallelujah. We've not had any reason, any cause to mourn over anyone. It is by his mercy. Hallelujah. I was just meditating and I asked God, I said, wow, the number of people that have even died post COVID is more than the people that died during the COVID era. Hallelujah. If you take stock. But the mercy, the grace of the Lord have been keeping us. We will not cease to thank him. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and thank him once again and tell him, Lord, thank you for your church even for every of our members in everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our members that normally connect. Hallelujah. Every member of God's family church in every of the micro churches. Hallelujah. Everywhere that we cannot even reach to, oh Lord. Thank you for these souls that you have used to beautify this church. God, I thank you, O oh King of glory, for every day, O oh Lord, we only share testimonies, O oh Lord, and you have given us a word in this year, O oh Lord, and you say, Father, that it is our year of liberty, it's our year of dominion, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for every member of God's family church everywhere, O oh Lord. Thank you, King of kings, for you've been keeping them, O oh Lord. Thank you for beautifying us, O oh Lord, with sound health. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you for making it possible for us to rejoice in your presence, O oh Lord. Thank you for giving, making us, O oh Lord, to enjoy, to enjoy unlimited blessings. You daily load us with benefit, O oh Lord. We are grateful. 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 Lord, we can't thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough, Lord. All we are saying, O oh Lord, is that you only are going to take all the glory, all the adoration, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' gracious name we have prayed. Hallelujah. I want us to pray from our believers' prayer guide. Hallelujah. I want us to specifically take the prayer B. Hallelujah. You know every contention of the enemy. Anyhow that the enemy will want to contend with you. Hallelujah. Tell him and declare it that every of his contention will come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Go ahead and open your mouth and declare it. Father, I I declare my body, I declare my spirit, I declare my soul, everything about me, I yield them to you, O oh Lord. I declare it and I give them to you willingly, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, Father, anyhow that the enemy will want to contend by my body, to contend about my soul, to contend about my spirit, O oh God, my Lord and my Father, in any way that he will want to dispute about my body, about my spirit, about everything about me, oh God, my Father, my God, I boldly declare that my spirit, my body, my flesh, my soul, all belong to you irreversibly in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let the spirit of God revoke every contention and claim of the enemy over my body in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my body for sanctification and for preservation in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, you have no say in my life, in my body. Every 
everything that concerns me in the name of Jesus Christ in this year of liberty and dominion. Lord, I am liberated from every shackles of the enemy. I am liberated from every troubles and problems of the enemy. I am liberated, oh Lord, from every contention of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Father. Hey, I dominate, oh Lord. I take dominion, oh King of glory, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, King of glory. I walk in dominion, oh Lord. I walk in dominion, Father. I walk in dominion, ancient of days. I walk in dominion, my Lord and my Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you. I give you the praises, O oh Lord. I give you all the honor. I give you all the adoration. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Be thou magnified, O oh Lord. Be thou exalted, O oh King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want you to open your mouth and ask that the spirit of the living God will dominate this service. In the name of Jesus. That the spirit of the living God will dominate this service from the beginning to the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now only the power of God will be demonstrated in this place in the name of Jesus. That those that are connected online, that the power of the Lord will be demonstrated everywhere they are in the name of Jesus Christ. That those that will even connect those that are in the micro churches, those that will come into this place, my Lord and my Father, only you are alive liberty to be operational in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, go ahead. Take control, O oh Lord. Let your presence, O oh Lord, dominate this service. Hallelujah. Let your presence, O oh King of glory, dominate this service. Hallelujah. Let your presence dominate this service. Let your spirit go on ahead and do that which no man is able to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as many as, O oh Lord, have come into this house, O oh King of glory, believing you for one thing or the other, King of glory, let there be an answer to everyone, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, let there be an answer, O oh Lord, to everyone's question, O oh King of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, go ahead, O oh Lord. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, move, O oh Lord, from the pulpit, O oh King of glory, to the pews, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. There's going to be great revelation of your word in today's service, O oh King of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, King of glory, your children are understanding, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit of sound mind, O oh Lord, spiritual understanding, O oh Lord, is at liberty in this place this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Gracious Father, we thank you for and today's service, O oh Lord. Testimonies are going to spring up, O oh Lord. Healing, deliverance, O oh King of glory, restorations, O oh Lord. They are taking place, O oh Lord. There shall be salvation of souls, O oh Lord, at the end of the service, O oh King of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Thank you, King of kings. Be thou exalted, ancient of days. Be thou exalted, mighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we declare this service open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let us be in the mood of worship, lifting up holy hands, worshiping our King of glory. Lord, we adore thee. Lord, we exalt you. We adore your holy name. We magnify thee, O God. You are God all by yourself. You are amazing. You are incredible. You are perfect. None like you, O oh God. None compared to thee, O oh God. We ascribe our praise to you. We give you our belovance, O oh God. For there is none like you, O oh God. We worship you, Lord. We exalt thee. You are the air we breathe. You are the life we live. Thank you for all you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh, Lord. You are, 
You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, You are. You are the light I need. Oh, you are. You are the life I need. Oh, God, you are, you are the air I breathe. Oh, you are, you are the air I breathe. Oh, God, you are, you are, you are the air.
worship you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. We know. Worship you, O oh Lord. We know my heart. We know my heart. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of you. The more I love you, the more I want to know more of you, Lord Jesus. More of you. You made my life. You made my life. You made my life so beautiful. And as you are, Lord, yeah. and as you are, you are sure. And there is nothing under the ground. That's why I love you. That's why I love you. Jesus, oh, I want more of the more I want, the more I want, the more I want to know you, Jesus, Jesus, oh, my I want, I want, I want, I want more.
For Jesus. You can do better than that. His name is Yahweh, the miracle working God, the everlasting Father. There is no one like Him. He has no beginning, He has no end. No one can be compared with Him. To Him alone be all glory, all honor, and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Shall we be seated? Say your neighbor, say, welcome to church. It is time for us to take our devotional for the day. Praise the Lord. I told us last week that when we are coming to church, let's come with our devotional. Because each service, we are going to read what corresponds with that particular day. And today is January 31. Praise the Lord. The last day in the month of January 2024. The Lord has been good to us. He kept us from January 1 up to this time. And that same God is still keeping us. He said, I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. Praise the Lord. Amen. 1 Peter 3 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be cautious. Praise the Lord. When you hear the word finally, he's telling you that this is it. After this, no more. After this, nothing else. Praise the Lord. For us to be in his grip, as the title is, is telling us what we are to do. He said, finally, be of one mind, having compassion one for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. 
This one does not need explanation. You know what it means to dwell in unity, for us to be sincere in all our doings, for us to be faithful brothers and sisters, for us to love our brothers and sisters the way we love ourselves, for us to be tender-hearted. Praise the Lord. The commentary said, Lord, I thank you for this month. I will obey your word and walk in love and in unity with one another and in the body of Christ. Holy Spirit, help me in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. If you have, if you have prayed these prayers, I'm, I'm showing you that the Holy Spirit will surely help us in Jesus' name. As we move from the end of this January into February, God will be with us in Jesus' name. Point of meditation. His grace kept me through this month. And I will also live by his grace into the new month. Thank you, Jesus. The same grace that sustained us from January 1 to January 31, that same grace is available for us, and we saw to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All we need to do is to live in unity, to dwell in unity, and to be tender-hearted, to love one another, as Jesus Christ has commanded us to do. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2, 8. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not for yourself, it is the gift of God. Praise the Lord. The same grace that has kept us this far, the same grace we saw to the end in Jesus' name. The Lord who has been protecting us from January 1, that God is still alive. Praise the Lord. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16, he said, I have, I have engraved you in the palms of my hand. Praise the Lord. And I was telling us in the morning, if you look at your hand, there is a sign there. That there, is a, there is a mark that is engraved in that hand. There is nothing you can do. There is no detergent in this world that can wash it off. Praise the Lord. So each morning when you wake up and you can find this mark, know fully where that is the way God has permanently engraved you in his hand and is watching over you. Praise the Lord. He's making sure that as you cross from January into February, it will see you through in Jesus' name. Throughout 2024 and many years ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Deuteronomy 23, 27, if also say, say that, he said the eternal God is our refuge. Praise the Lord. And underneath are the everlasting arms. The, the everlasting arms of God is underneath us. We cannot fall. No matter what happens to us, God's hand is there to rescue us. No matter where we find ourselves, that's why David said, even if I walk in the, in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are what? You are with me. There is an eternal hand that is washing over us, that is keeping us. And that hand will source us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You need not to fear. Don't be afraid that people are dying in the right, by the left, everywhere. You are not going to die. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your case is different. The same God who is watching us in the morning is watching us at night. And will watch us to the end in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, Psalm 17, verse 8. Say, keep me as the apple of your eye. That is, how we are, that is how precious we are to God. But one thing we must know is that we must do our part. We must love as God loves. We must be tender-hearted. We must care for one another. We must not live a selfish life. And as we do this, God will continuously uphold us, and he will not forsake us. Praise the Lord. I want us to bow down our head and say, Father, I thank you for seeing me through from, from 1st of January up to this time. Your grace that sustained me from January 1 to now, that same grace is available for me, and it will see me through in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. So you alone be all glory. To you alone be all honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Say thank you, Jesus. Are you grateful that you are seeing the end of January? Yes. It will shock you to know the number of people that didn't see the end of January. It will shock you. But God has not allowed that to be our portion. And that grace that brought us today will see us to the end. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lift up your hand and give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. God is good and his grace is upon us. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We acknowledge you and we thank you for your faithfulness, for seeing us, Lord, for seeing us, Lord, from the beginning of this month to the end. We will not take anything for granted, but Lord, we will acknowledge you with thanksgiving. And we are grateful. We are thankful. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats. I want to welcome you to this wonderful gospelology service. We must never forget that gospelology is the application of the word of God to manifest divine realities or divine truth. It means that application is equal to manifestation. Praise the Lord. It means that there is no way you will put the word of God to work and the word of God will not work in you. All we have to do is put the word to work. Amen? Amen. Say, I will put the word of God to work. And the word of God is going to work for me. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Exodus 23, 25. I know that all of us know this so well that we can almost sing it as a song. Amen. Amen. Exodus 23, verse what? What does he say? So you shall serve the Lord your God. So you shall serve the Lord your God. And he will bless your bread, bless your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Praise the Lord. God says, and you shall serve me, and I will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst or from your family or from your household. He said, you don't need to pray. You don't need to fast. Serve me and I will do it. Amen. Amen. The problem is that many of the things we know so well, we hardly understand so well. And so we say, but, but. He says so, 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 and I have done it, why is it not working? And so you can see that it is very easy for a Christian not to be sick. In our year of liberty and dominion, you can be in divine health. You can have divine health. There is only one condition. That condition is that you shall serve. And so, how do I qualify to that condition? How do I measure my service? Can I go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have served. Keep your own part. Keep your own part. And we know that God exalts his word above everything else, isn't it? God never failed with his word. But he said, I will take sickness not only from you, but from your midst. That's what the Bible says. I will take sickness away. I will take sickness away. I want you to underline that particular word. God said, I will take sickness away. Amen? Amen. And then we can rush to Matthew. 
chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 17. The title of this message, as simple as it is, is to obey and be blessed. To obey and what? Be and be blessed. So God said, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee or from around you or from your household. That's what God says. But there is a condition. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, or let's read from verse 16, praise the Lord. The Bible says, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirit with a word, say with a word, and heal all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Read what it says. Saying what? Him himself, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Is that in your Bible? He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Somebody say shout hallelujah. It is a reality to live the Christian life without sickness and disease. As long as you keep your own part, God is guaranteed to keep his own part. The question is that, are you keeping your own part? We've been looking at what it means to obey the word of the Lord. We have looked at what it means for married people to obey the word of the Lord. We have looked at that. We have looked at what it means for us to serve the Lord. But I want us to go back to Exodus 23. Let us go up a little bit and read from verse 20. The same chapter. Because sometimes when we extract something, when we extract something from a chapter, and we don't bother to go back and check the other part of it, so we miss it. But thank God, the scripture is there for us. You are not allowed to edit the scriptures for your own pleasure. You are not allowed to do what? To edit the scriptures. You can't edit it. From verse 20, are we there? Exodus 23. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. First, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. To keep you in the way. To keep you in the way. If you are not in the way, you will never get to the destination. Praise the Lord. The devotional about uh, two days ago says God allows a U-turn. And so... It doesn't matter how long you've been on the wrong road. It will never take you to a destination. But the moment you make a U-turn, you begin to arrive. Praise the Lord. A turn around takes you to your destination. But no matter how sincere you are and continue on the wrong road, you will never get there. And God said, I have sent my angel to keep you in the right way. To help you be on the right way. In the New Testament. We don't have angels to guide us. In the right way. Isn't it? In the New Testament we don't have angels. Isn't it? What do we have? We have the Holy Spirit. He is greater than angels. He is greater than angels. Praise the Lord. And so we can say behold. Behold. I give you my Holy Spirit to be with you and to keep you in the way that I have prepared for you to go. Praise the Lord. Verse 21. Beware of him. Beware of the angel. Beware of him. 
and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Do not provoke him. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgression. The scripture is very clear. Obey his voice. Obey his word. Verse 22. But if you indeed obey his voice, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then what will happen? I will be an enemy to your enemies, an adversary to your what? Shout hallelujah. It is very easy not to recognize enemies. It is very easy not to recognize adversaries. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It is very difficult for you to look up and look down at the same time. Isn't it? Have you tried it? Try to look up and look down. Try it to see how easy it is. Amen. So either you are looking up or you are looking down. And as long as you see enemies and adversaries, what does that mean? What does that mean? Come on. You are smarter than that. As long as you can see your enemies and your adversaries, as long as you can see them, where are you looking at? You are looking down. Because your enemies are down. Praise the Lord. But when you look up, you behold the glory. You behold the beauty of Zion. You know, they are saying that, they are saying that there are problems everywhere. You say, which problem? Uh, they, 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 they ask Papa, they ask Papa, have you ever had a problem? He said, maybe he came and I didn't notice it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is another realm. That is another level. And that's why the Bible said that if we live in the spirit, we should also walk in the spirit. The key to living a life of divine health is in your obedience to the word of God. Our obedience to the word of God ushers us into a life of liberty and dominion. Oh yes. The, the choice is us. By the way, before you were saved, you were already enslaved to the devil. That's the truth. Every unsaved person is a slave to the devil. And the devil can kill and go anytime. Nobody that is unsaved can resist the devil. How? How? Only we that are born of God. Because it is written, whatsoever that is born of God, overcome it, overcome it, overcome it. Praise the Lord. If you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. An adversary, ah, uh, an adversary to what? Verse 24. Verse 24. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works. But you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. Praise the Lord. I want us to understand where he says, nor serve them, nor do according to their works nor serve their God nor do according to their works nor do according to their works that is the danger if you read verse 23 he said for my angel will go before you and bring you into the 
Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Canaanite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Is that in your Bible? And so when he says, don't do the works of these people, God is talking about the hidden nations and the unbelievers. By the way, what is their works? What is the works of these nations that God said, don't do their works? Don't be like them. Don't serve their God. What? What is their works? One of them is unbelief. They don't believe in the living God. That is why they have their gods. That is why they have their idols. And they make sacrifices to their idols. That is their works. And so they live in opposition or in contrariness to the word of God. And God said, listen to me. Follow me. Follow my word. Do not do the works of the unbeliever. Do not behave like unbelievers. What is the works of the unbelievers? Rebellion, stubbornness, disobedience, witchcraft. That's the works of the unbeliever. Pride. These are the works. And God said, do not do their works. Very often, when Christians check out the word of God and it doesn't work for them, and they said, maybe my faith is not strong enough or my faith is not big enough. If you look at the scriptures we are talking about, it has nothing to do by faith. It has nothing to do with faith. Is that not true? What the scripture says, serve me and I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. Serve me. Serve me. Serve me. Serve me. How do we serve? By obeying. You know, yesterday night, we were, after the prayer, we were just discussing about the, some, some little, little things involved in Christianity. I think Pastor Isaac, Mommy, and all of we were discussing it there. And I was explaining some things to them. And, and they were amazed at the things I was explaining. It is the word of God. The problem we have is that we have not been properly taught the word of God. And so we take the word on the surface. And so when it doesn't work for us, we think it's the devil, but it is our ignorance. It is our ignorance. And until you understand the word of God in its fullness, you will not be able to get the fullness of the blessings. And it is important it is important that you understand the word of God. For instance, before you get married, understand the word of God about marriage. Don't just get married because you think you're a full grown or just because you want to have children. God has laid out in Malachi chapter 2. The Bible tells us God expects a godly seed from your union. So if you're going to get married, ask yourself, will you be able to raise godly seed unto the Lord? Because that's God's will. Understand God's will in the area of finances if you want to do well. You, you have to honor the Lord with your tithe, with your offering. You may not like it, but that is the condition for you to enjoy the benefit of salvation in the area of prosperity. Simple. Simple. You may not like it. And unfortunately, only 20% or less pay their tithe in the average church. 20% or less pay their tithe. And so some people, they know they should do it, but they don't do it because they think that God will understand. How will God understand? Will God condescend to your level to understand? No, 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 no. God will never come to the level of man. And so... When God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge. People suffer because they don't apply the word of God. Application brings manifestation. When you are sick, the Bible said in James 5, if you are sick, call for the elders of the church. They will pray for you. They will anoint you with oil. And now, you got sick. You didn't call them. They found out that you were sick just because you didn't come to church. And then they call you and you say, oh, I didn't come to church because I was sick. 
you didn't follow the rules. You may think that the, that the way of God may be difficult, but try the devil. Are you hearing me? Try the devil. God's rule is very simple for us to follow. And let me tell you, let me tell you, it is only a criminal that finds the law very difficult. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Only a criminal complains about the law. We say, ah, why now? Eh? Why did they say that uh, you cannot park anywhere you want on the road? Because you are a lawbreaker. The law was meant to control society. And also, in the spirit realm, the God's law is to curb lawlessness. Do you know what you will be like if there is no control in your life? No. Do you know? Do you know what your life will be like? Even presently, you have a lot of suffering associated with your life. Why? Because you are struggling with your obedience. And God said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. He didn't say if you are obedient. He didn't say so. You see, when you drag yourself, you manage yourself to obey the word of God, you are struggling, you are struggling. You will not get blessed, even though you obey. Even though you obey. The same thing like a, a woman that is struggling to obey the husband, to be under the authority of the husband, and... Mm, even in her submission, she's complaining and saying, I don't understand these things. Eh? Why will I submit? I'm being oppressed and all that. The woman may submit and do the right things, but because it is not out of love, she will get nothing. In the same way, God said to the husband, love your wife. Do not be harsh with them. And the man says, well, my wife is difficult. And then the man will struggle. We struggle to love the wife. He said, I'm only doing this because of God. If not for God, I wouldn't love you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't love her. Because it's not God you married. Amen. It's not God you married. And so, even when you say you love her, go to 1 Corinthians 13. Understand what it means to love. Not the way you want, not what you think, not what you were told. Every time we come across the word of God, like, let us, I want to show you something. Let's go to verse 25 again. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Verse 26. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is the number of our days? Praise the Lord. Because you have been taught what the number of our days should be here from Genesis 6. But there are many people that don't know it. And they say to you, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. No. The gift of God is without repentance. Praise the Lord. It's not the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Amen. James 4, 7 tells us, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Devil will try to kill anybody that allows him to kill him. But you need to stand your ground. I say, devil, you can't kill me. You can't kill me. I serve the Lord. And the Lord has promised the number of my days he will fulfill. The number of my days is in the hand of God. God has ensured the number of my days. My days is 120. And then even as you are saying 120, and then you have people that say to you, there are old people sicknesses. There are old people diseases. They say to you, uh, you say, you, 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 let's say you say to them that you are feeling pain in your leg. They say, how many years are you? He said, 55. 
He said, oh, it's normal. He said, why? He said, normally when you cross 50, some of these things, they say, you, are, you know, you are getting old. 55, they say, you are getting old. Go back to the Old Testament. Go back and read. People were getting married at the age of 60, 70, 80. That was when they began to get married. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? No, I'm not saying that you should wait that long now. Because some of you will say, thank you, Jesus. Finally, pastor confirmed what I've been thinking. Now, now that's, <laughs> praise the Lord. That is not what, Michael, it's not what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Because there are people who will always take this thing out of context. He says, now I know. Huh? So, so, if those people got married at the age of 60, 70 in the Old Testament, and we are in the dispensation of grace, it means that I can go up to 80 and 90. Ah, praise God. That's not what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. I am saying that nobody should qualify you as an old man at the age of 60, 70, 80. Nobody. Reject their qualification. Tell them, I'm not old. And that's why we don't discuss how old you are here. Do you understand? We don't discuss how old are you. We ask how many years are you? How many years have you spent? Also, when you say 50, we know there is still 70 left. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now I just did my I just did my sister better. That's first face. Amen. And now we start again. One. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's the truth. First face just went. And now the second face is always more glorious than the first face. Praise the Lord. And so I'm excited to have entered into second phase. And you should be looking forward to the first second phase. Because the first phase is just learning and maturing and getting yourself, you know, fully taught and all that. And so when you enter into the second phase, you begin to walk in power. And then that's when people are telling you, you know, you are getting old. It's normal. For the pain in your life, check it, maybe rheumatism. And then they say, Go and buy the tablet for rheumatism. They register it to you, they sold it to you. And they would even give you the tablet for free. Say, God forbid. God forbid. Reject some free gift. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell them you don't need it. Tell them you don't need it. We have an example. The Bible said that Moses was 120. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural strength abetted. And that, I mean, God have to say to Moses, come and die. Praise the Lord. It means that Moses was not supposed to die, but Moses died by invitation of the Lord. What about Paul? Paul said, I, I don't know which one to decide. I am thinking whether to stay or to go. He said, but if I stay, that will be profitable to you. But if I'm to go, that will be profit to me. But he said, which one do I decide? He said, for your sake. Shout hallelujah. For your sake. If you get the revelation in that. You see, Paul said, for your sake, I will stay a little bit longer. Why didn't the devil kill him? No. If the devil can kill anybody, why is it that Paul said, I have to choose whether to go or to stay? But he says, for your sake, I will stay. And I summarize from that, that as long as you are profitable to the kingdom, profitable to the body of Christ, nobody will take you away. But when you retire, you are, you are tired. You will go home. God said, the number of your days I will fulfill. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And the number is 120. God did not guarantee that you will be weak and feeble and full of sickness and disease. That's not God's portion. That's not God's way. No, that's not. Praise the Lord. As long as you can resist the devil, 
you will always overcome the devil. For it is written, whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. The key is our obedience. Can we find ourselves in obedience to the word of God? Can we find ourselves in submission to the word of God? Can we find ourselves yielded to the spirit of God? Can we find ourselves living for Christ? Can we find ourselves being a pillar of truth in the house of God? Can we find ourselves in love in serving the Lord? Can we find ourselves being profitable and partner to the work of God? Can we find ourselves being promoters of the gospel. Praise the Lord. When Doc has died in the house of the apostles, was it the family that brought her back to life? No. Was it the family? But the Bible says she was rich in good works. She was what? Rich in good works. It is in your own interest to be rich in good works. It is in your own interest to be rich in good works. It is in your own interest to love to obey the word of God. It is in your own interest to love to be in God's presence. It is in your own interest to learn how to worship, how to serve. It is in your own interest to obey the word of God. Because God said, I will take sickness and disease away from your midst. God says, none shall suffer miscarriage. None shall be barren. God said, the number of days I will fulfill. Praise the Lord. And then he went on to say, in verse 27. Are we there? Read it. Come on, everybody together. Exodus 23, verse 27. One, two, go. <laughs> shout hallelujah you know we have gotten used to the lord will take away sickness and disease from the midst of thee and then he will bless us we have gotten used to that but in verse 27 i see that we don't need to bind any enemies or power from your father's house amen i can see that can you not see it what does it say? I will send my fear before you. <laughs> Do you know what it means when the fear of the Lord goes before you? Before you get to where the armed robbers are, they would have scattered. You are going, and like ushers are in front of you, but these are not ordinary ushers. These are angelic ushers. He says, your goodness and mercy shall follow me. Shall what? Follow me. Have you thought about what is um, your goodness and your mercy? These are angelic beings qualified in that name. Angelic beings. God said, I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. What does it mean? When you see the back of your enemies, what does it mean? Come on, what does it mean? They just run when nobody's pursuing them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They just run when nobody is what? Pursuing them. Dr. Mokbai shared a testimony about a Christian doctor that was practicing his practice, rented a house from a woman, and for no reason, because they prayed there and uh, the woman didn't like them, the woman said the doctor must leave. The doctor said, but I have an agreement. He said, I don't care. I will give you back your money. Just leave. The doctor said, I can't just live like that. This is a hospital. You can't just vacate a hospital like that. And the woman said, whether you like it, it's my house. You must go. If you don't go, I will show you. And the man went to Dr. Mokbai. And Dr. Mokbai said, do you want to stay there? He said, yes. He said, then go and stay he said, but the woman, he said, leave the woman. He said, tonight, the woman will get a message. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. He said, tonight, the woman will do what? Get a message. Don't worry, go and continue your practice. And the doctor didn't know what Papa means or meant. And so he went back to his practice. In the night, 
the host of heaven descended on her bedroom. Are you hearing me? They descended in her bedroom. Mm. Do you know when the air is beating you, that's when you know it's the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Mm. You said the doctor should go. Mm. Did you say the doctor should go? Say power, pass power. My neighbors, my neighbors. People broke in, they came into the house. Mama, what is it? He said, they are beating me. They are beating. Go and tell doctor, I'm sorry. Go and tell, we're talking about midnight. Go and tell doctor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell doctor, I'm sorry. Mm. Mm. Praise the Lord. Doctor didn't know what was happening. Doctor was only told, your landlady will get a message. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Laban was pursuing Jacob to do him harm. Jacob did not even know, but heaven knew. And so in the night, when Laban wanted to rest, he got a message. Praise the Lord. Our God, listen, before witches started flying in the night, angels were being sent on assignment in the night. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, I will cause your enemies to flee before you. You will see their back. You won't see their face. In the morning, the woman ran to the doctor. Doctor, 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 you can stay in the house. In fact, you can take the house. You can take the house. Please, I'm sorry. Forgive me. The doctor said, what happened? He said, no, no, I can't explain, but just stay. Continue to stay. Eh? If you want the house, take it. Shout hallelujah. The day it will dawn on us that we are the children of the landlord on planet earth, our attitude will change. Shout hallelujah. The day it will dawn on us that we are not just ordinary, we are the children of the landlord on planet earth. That's when they will stop molesting us. Some years ago, before we bought the remaining part of this land, in the night, the Lord told me, two men are going to come and contend for that land. But don't worry, be ready for them. I said, okay, thank you, Lord. The Lord told me, he said, just be ready, they will come to contend for the land. Two of them. And that faithful day, I was under the tree with my Bible studying, just at the back. And then they came and told me that two people from the Alade family, that they are in the land, and that they said... They are from the Alade and the land is their own. And uh, it's their land, quite all right. But I bought part of it already. And so I said, bring them to me. When the Lord has given you advance notice, it makes you to be at peace. Praise the Lord. See, God didn't say they will not fight against you. But what he said is that they will not prevail. And many of us are praying, Lord, they will not fight me. They will. You are praying contrary to the scriptures. He said, they will surely gather against you, but not by me. So let them gather. They are allowed to gather. They are allowed to what? But we say, Lord, they will not gather against me. Let them gather so that when you smite them once, you will smite all of them. Let them be in one place. And so that when the thunder comes upon them, it will register heavy blow. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then the men came. And uh, I said to them, what, what are you looking for? They said that the, the man said he's the head of the Alade family. The other one is the junior brother, the second head. I said, okay, so what is going on? They said they came to look through the place because they want to sell it. I said, sell to who? They said the Chinese wants to buy it. What does the Chinese want to do inside here? What do the Chinese want to do? They say that uh, they want to buy it. I said, uh, but you know we're interested in the land. They said, except if we pay a certain amount. I said, that money you are asking, both the church and my account and everybody as far as I know, we don't have that kind of money. They said that we have to pay. Otherwise, they will sell it. I said, okay. 
I said, then go and sell to the Chinese. But the Chinese will use helicopter to land inside our land. We can sell to them, but they will use helicopter. To... Chinese. Chinese. They should use broomstick to land there. They say, no, that the law said that I should create a path to the stream. And that uh, the law is that I should create that path to the stream. The law. I asked him, I said, how many Alade families have houses on this street? Is it not three? They say yes. I said, who does one of them? And create a path into that because it's still the law. Praise the Lord. And then one of them said that, uh, Pastor, we are going to sell the land, though. We are going to sell the land because the Chinese want to. I said, I stood up. I said, Go and sell it. I said, But if you will live to enjoy the money, you know that God has not sent me. Go. Go. The man that said he is the head of he just came from his chair and knelt down. And the brother saw him and knelt down to him. He said, Pastor, please don't cause us, pray for us. He said, please, it has not come to that now. Actually, we are thinking that it's good for church to be here because church being here brings God's presence. And blah, 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 blah. He said, please, it's not, it has not come to that now. Just pray for us. And I saw this old man knelt down on the hard concrete. What brought them to that? Money. They want Chinese to pay them. And I saw them. I began to pray for them. And I blessed them. I, after blessing us, I said, get up, sit down here, now let's talk. I said, how much do you people say that you want to sell? They said, Pastor, how much do you have? I said, now you are talking. Praise the Lord. Many of you, you just think that Pastor bought this land because I had the money. No, I bought the land because God gave it to me. Praise the Lord. Anything God gives to you is cheaper than what you can buy. And it is for that reason, divine health is better than medically kept health. When the Lord gives you divine health, believe me, brothers and sisters, it is the cheapest anywhere on planet Earth. It is the cheapest anywhere on planet Earth. Do you know how many people take, uh, I read about somebody that is... Um, that's trying to maintain youthfulness. They say she's a guru in this and that. And she says she takes about 36 tablets in a day. 36 tablets in a day just to look young. And I looked at her, the picture they put there, I said, is that not foolishness? You can look young and die tomorrow. Amen. And so how many tablets will she need to take if she is to live long? Maybe 100 tablets. And yet, there is nothing that guarantees long life. Otherwise, Michael Jackson wouldn't have died. Otherwise, Steve Jobs wouldn't have died. These people are loaded financially, isn't it? The Queen of England wouldn't have died. Praise the Lord. All the money she needs, she has it. And you know what? When I gave them my offer, they said, Pastor, when are you coming to pay? I said, when all the Alade family, we gather together, and all the Alade will sign for me. All those that are there, their children will sign. So that nobody will question. They say, is it necessary? I say, yes. They say, I should give them time. And I gave them time. And they gathered everybody, everybody, those that were dead, their children. And I got it. Praise the Lord. I paid them and I got all their signatures so nobody will come and talk. In fact, one of them, the, the children of the one that is late, wanted to say, he said, why are they selling so all the land? They said, will you shut up and sign? I said, that's a very good answer. Shut up and sign. That's what they, In the meeting, they said, will you shut up and sign? His hand was shaking now. He still signed. Praise the Lord. Say, God is good. God said, if you obey me, you are enemies. You can only see their back. Wouldn't you like that? You will hear that they say, 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 that's not my business because their back is only what I can see. Bring them to me. They say, no, no, I will never stand before him. I'm running. That's what God said. God says so. 
Praise the Lord. God said, I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will be an adversary to your adversaries. There is so much for us to gain in Christ. You see, that is actually true liberty and dominion. When you don't recognize any enemy. You don't recognize any enemy. You know why? God's word said he will fix them. You don't recognize sickness and disease. You know what? God's word say, I will take care of it. Make sure you just continue with your life of obedience and leave the rest for me. Do you understand how simple this life is? The life of the spirit is the sweetest life. The life of the spirit is the most glorious life. Don't let anybody deceive you. The cheapest quality life you can get on planet Earth is under Christ and in Christ. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Jesus said, I am the door. You can come in and go out and you will find pasture. Nobody will molest you. Praise the Lord. If not for God, I will not be who I am today. Because men have designed that I will be nothing. If not for God. And that is why I live carefreely, irrespective of what man think or say. Amen? Did you hear what I said? I live carefreely unto my God. I owe nobody anything. Because all I owe is in Christ. And Christ is all I have. And because of Christ, Christ is away from me. Praise the Lord. You can imagine me, that's all. You can imagine me, but you will not know fully. Because the power that is at work in me, ah, that power, he works in me daily. It's not, we are not talking about um, uh, buying a car. Those are elementary things. We are not talking about buying a house. Those are elementary. We are talking about a life of power. We are talking about a life of power. And not only you, but those around you connect to that power. Praise the Lord. Do you know why the devil wants you to be lawless in your life? That's the only way he can hit you. Do you know why the devil don't want you to pay your tithe and give off it? That's the only way he can, he can hit your finances. You don't get it. No, you don't get it. Whether you pay tithe or not will never make God poor. It will never make the church poor. But it will bring poverty upon your life. And that's what the devil is after. Poverty in your life. Your disobedience. You are disobedient. Who does it hurt? The church or you? The Bible already said that the way of the transgressor is hard. And so, the devil wants to put you on a hard life. And they say, Nobody will tell me what I want to do. I will do what I want to do. I am my own person. Very soon, you will not have a person. You didn't hear what I said? You will not have a person. I remember the story one of uh, our daughter shared with, with, with me in uh, Germany. She said there was this rich guy. They, were, they brought him to the hospital. Rich. He said, if you see the expensive watch this guy was wearing. And then in the morning, she went to attend to him. And then this man with all his money, he couldn't even wear his fine clothes again. He was wearing the hospital. I don't know what they call it. But you know, hospital and, pr and prison, they wear uniform. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is it not true? Both of them, hospital wear uniform, prison wear. The only two different things are the other one is uh, sickness, the other one is crime. <laughs> and so. She said that she went to attend to the man. If I get it correctly, she told the man, please turn. The man looked at her and said, look at me. I have the best cars. I have this. I have that. See where I am. And now I have to obey you to turn. And now I have to obey you to turn. Praise the Lord. Your car will not turn you. Amen. 
and she said the watch the man was wearing alone the watch was wearing alone but here just a simple daughter of mine from nowhere said turn turn <laughs> where is your money now you will never see shame you will never see reproach God does not allow his elect. I was in Benin when Archbishop passed away. They didn't take Archbishop to the mortuary. No. He was too big to be put in the mortuary. Archbishop was not put in the mortuary. They created a mortuary in his palace. There are things you overgrow as a believer. Amen. Look at Moses. Moses died. God said, I will bury you. <laughs> Say thank you, Jesus. Get to the point where ah 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 ah. Ezekiah was a worshiper. The king of Assyria said, I'm going to invade Jerusalem. I'm going to attack Jerusalem. And then he went to worship. And the Lord said to him, The king of Assyria will not shoot an arrow in this city. I will defend it for my name's sake. He said, I will cause him to hear a rumor and he will flee. Say, God is too big. Come to a place where you will not recognize enemies. Come to a place in service whereby what they say does not matter to you. I will encourage you, go and listen to again Life Without Bitterness. Shout hallelujah. This week, this week, go and listen to that message again. And if, I, if I'm to advise you, I will advise you to listen to that message once in a week. Life without bitterness. Life without bitterness. Go and listen to that message. As I was listening to it yesterday, this morning, it refreshed me so much. Go. There are messages that God sent to help you. Life without bitterness is a reality. It's a possibility. Life without bitterness. Now, if you have life without bitterness, what will you have? Come on, a bitter leaf is not in the soup. How will it be? And so if you don't have bitterness in your life, how will it be? May you have a sweet life. May you have a sweet life. You sing, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. How? You are. You are. Than the morning. Hold on. But how did it start? Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how? And the Bible said as he is. Are you hearing me? Can you sing sweet Timothy, sweet Timothy, how wonderful? Then he will not bully anybody. Is it not true? If you want to fight, sweet Timothy, he said, he said, you are blessed. <laughs> it's not true. Very correct. <laughs> if, uh, is it not true? At the time you was getting ready, feel me, feel me. He just said, sweet Timothy, sweet Timothy, how wonderful you are. He says, if not for that song. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many of you, you know, instead of you talking, where's my food? Like, sweet mercy, sweet mercy, how wonderful. <laughs> it's you that don't know how to talk. Yes. Praise the Lord. As he is, so we are. Life without 
bitterness means life full of sweetness. May your life be sweet. May your life be sweet. Rise on your feet and say, my life will never be bitter. Never in the name of Jesus Christ. My life will never be bitter. Nothing will make my life bitter. Christ in me is the hope of glory. No bitterness. No anguish. No pain in my life. I stand sweet Jesus. And therefore my life must be sweet. I must walk in sweetness. I must have sweetness. Every day of 2024. Every day of my life. Shout hallelujah. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. Even that will, will even stop you from frowning. When you want to frown, they say, but you are not sweet again. You say, mm-mm. You say, mm-mm. You say, mm-mm. You say, mm-mm. Praise the Lord. Do you know why we, go, we give tip in the restaurant? We give tip to the, those that smile. Isn't it? The waiters that don't smile, nobody gives them tip. <laughs> and if you are to serve the Lord with a smile, if you are to obey the Lord with a smile, ah, one day he will just show up like, he did, like the way he came to Cornelius. He said, Lord, you are in my house. He said, yes. I have come to visit you. Praise the Lord. He said, I have come to visit you. He said, by the time I am gone, watch out. The landlord will give you this place for free. Because the Lord said, we will build houses without money. But you see, we, we haven't believed God to that level. Why? Because our obedience is haphazard. A change has come in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift up our tithe and our offering unto the Lord. The church account details is online. You can send directly to the church account and the Lord will equally bless you. Father, we thank you for this time of the word. And thank you, Lord, for the liberty and dominion that exists in the word of God. We are a people without sickness, a people without disease, people without bitterness and sorrow. Father, we thank you because this is our heritage. And we are walking in it in 2024. In the name of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. We worship you with our tithes. We worship you with our offering and with our seed. Thank you, Lord, for the devourer is rebuked in Jesus' mighty name. Our prosperity is protected. Our divine health is protected. To the glory of God. Thank you, Father, for our tithe, our offering, our finances. We continue to support the gospel in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, my God is good. Say, my God is good. Now, today, we are not going for evangelism. Praise the Lord. And because we have gotten the word, but we will continue tomorrow, 5.30. Praise the Lord. And the word we have gotten, make good use of it. Make good use of the word. And like I said, tonight, listen to the life without bitterness. I encourage you, listen to it once or twice in a week. You can. You can. Because faith comes by hearing. Praise the Lord. Just go to YouTube, type Gospelology Eden, life without bitterness. It will show up. It's not difficult. Amen. 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 You are blessed. Lift up your hand. Father, I bless your people as they have decreed, both those online, those in the micro church. Lord, as they have decreed, so shall it be unto them. A life of sweetness. A life of divine health. A life of abundance. I prophesy thy unto you in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name.
Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And you know that this Sunday is our super Sunday. Praise the Lord. It's our super Sunday. We didn't announce it on Sunday, but we're announcing it now. And so that means we're going to have communion on Sunday also. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a powerful service. Liberty and dominion is in the blood. Amen. Liberty and dominion is where? In the blood. And I encourage you, make sure you prepare yourself. And as you come, the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' precious name, you are blessed. And you are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, let us share the grace together. So for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are following me all the days of our lives. God bless you.